And for those of you that are joining us by, by way of live stream this morning, we say a very special welcome to you as well. A lot of our church family is still joining us that way. And uh, so we welcome them into the sanctuary with us this morning as well. And we do say thank you for your patience uh, through this crazy time that we found ourselves in. Uh, next week we will be going back to uh, a little bit more of a normal schedule with some Sunday school classes and things of that nature. Uh, but uh, this morning Debbie's class will continue to go. Uh, uh, so other than that, everyone else will be staying in the sanctuary with us this morning. Uh, but I just want to take us right into the word of the Lord this morning, if that's all right. And I'm going to ask you to turn your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter number 3. 2 Timothy chapter number 3 this morning. We'll be reading and laying a foundation from that passage of Scripture uh, in just a moment. But if the Lord would help me today, I want to talk to you, hopefully encourage you to not be weary in well-doing today in the midst of all of the craziness, but I'd hope to be able to bring some awareness to where we are this morning. Uh, but if you'll stay with me, we may start a little slow this morning just because I want you to get this passage of Scripture and I want to get it into your spirit. But if you stay with me, we will end strong this morning with the help of the Holy Spirit, I promise. But uh, I want to take us to a very familiar passage of Scripture and we're going to uh, read the first five verses of this chapter and we find the following. And it says... This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away for a few moments this morning i'm going to try to take this passage and bring to you this morning the reality of our day paul is writing to timothy a man who he has grown to love like a son and his purpose for writing to him in 2 Timothy is to encourage him to continue on as well as to walk in a manner where he is unwavering in his faith. Paul writes in such a manner that he says that in the last days, meaning there is a time coming in the future where perilous times will come. Perilous time simply means a time that is full of grave risk, hazardous conditions, or dangerous conditions. Friend, we are in those days right now. But notice Paul writes that says, these perilous times shall come due to this simple fact, not because of a big bad devil per se, but these perilous times are coming because men shall be lovers of their own selves. Codus, boasters, proud, all of the things that we read. But really, when you get to verse 5, where we're going to focus a little bit more this morning, he said there will be a time where they have a form of godliness, but they're going to deny the power thereof. He said, you have to turn away from such. So today, where we find ourselves if we would be completely honest, is because of the heart of men. Today, the world that's around us is shaking and full of uncertainty. 2014, I preached a message in this building. Simply, or the building next door, I should say, I believe. We find that it was a time of preserving the landmarks of our faith and I stand by that message today if there has ever been a time where we needed to stand and defend that which the word of the Lord is very clear concerning it is now 
I want to focus this morning for a few moments when Paul was simply saying, when you see men begin to have a form and begin to deny the power of God, he told Timothy, he said, you must turn away. Last week we simply preached a message talking about turning to the wall. This morning, I cannot emphasize enough in your hearing today that in recent years, the American church has slipped into a place of great dysfunction due to men desiring to take control of it and trying to rebrand it instead of allowing God to guide us by and through the Holy Spirit. This morning, we can pretend that we have all that we need to be effective in this very moment of time. But we are kidding ourselves this morning because today, if we are going to describe the American church, we have to describe it in this manner. It has become unfathered. It has become uncorrected. It has become unfruitful. It has become unhealed. Please hear me this morning. And it has become untaught. How do I know this to be true is because of the simple fact that perilous times is the result of such behavior. Notice Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 15 through 17 concerning an unfathered church. He says, For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have you not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore I beseech you, be you followers of me for this cause. Have I sent unto you Timothy, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. He's simply saying to the, to the church at Corinth, you have to become fathered again. Today in the church in America, we need some men and women to begin to be fathers and mothers to a generation. Concerning the uncorrected church, Paul writes to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 19 through 21. He said, Against an elder received not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. But notice the following verse, Them that sin rebuke before all that others also may fear. Can I tell you something this morning? I told you you had to stay to the end for us to finish well. Some of you need to be corrected this morning because you're believing the lies of the enemy. You're living in sin and you're going to hell, but yet you're in church. Singing that we love you, Jesus, isn't going to get you to heaven. Repenting of sin and turning and following him will. The unfruitful church in the book of John 15, verse number 16, the Lord of the Lord says, You didn't choose me, but I have chosen you. He said, Not only have I chose you, but I've ordained you. He said, I didn't just choose you and ordain you, but I simply did this, that you should go and bring forth much fruit. Can I tell you, we can come to the house of the Lord every Sunday morning, but if we're not reaching the lost, we are not being fruitful. If we're not touching our neighbors, if we're not touching our community, if we're not touching the nations of the world, we're just fooling ourselves. We have become the unfruitful church. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse number 14 says this, They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Can I tell you, we're not... We're not healed today, but we're still wounded by all of the scars of our yesterday, and we think that God's not able to do what really needs to be done. Can I tell you, the God that saves you is a God is also that's able to heal you. But today, we just try to get people through things instead of getting them delivered from things because we are the untaught church. 
2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 15 through 17, it says, And that from a child, Timothy, thou hast known the Holy Scripture, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. He said, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for the doctrine, for the reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. What he was simply saying is, Timothy, don't allow anybody to take you from what you know is true. Can I say to you this morning that there has to be some things dealt with immediately. We can no longer continue to do the same thing and expect to get different results. You've heard us say it before, that is the definition of insanity. That's why in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 1, Paul writes, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. You also read in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 3. I know I'm giving you lots of scripture this morning. But it says, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. Meaning this, there are those that's going to mock the word of God. We're seeing that today. But to you and I that's in this room and to all of humanity, in 1 John chapter number 2, verse 15 through 18, we hear a word of warning. And I want you to hear this this morning. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now there are many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. Can I tell you today in the American church, we have been led astray by seducing spirits because we have allowed men to remove the landmarks of our faith. Solomon writes in Proverbs 22, 28, remove not the ancient landmarks which thy fathers have set. I want to say this this morning. While I believe the church should be cutting edge to reach a generation, I do not believe the church has the right, nor do they have the authority to change or remove the landmarks of the faith. When you began to do that, you began to go against the will of God and the Word of God. Please hear me this morning. Words of warning was given to Israel, the children of Israel. Deuteronomy 19 and 14 says, Thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmarks, which they of old time have set in thy inheritance. Deuteronomy 27, 17. Cursed be he that removeth the landmarks. Notice with me, we must once again come back to the things that God has created us to be. Is this really where we find ourselves today, Pastor? Notice with me, there's a few great men of God shortly before their death, they had this to say. Smith Wigglesworth saw the need for purity, holiness, and separation, and he urged the church to wake up. Kenneth Hagin saw a scroll that simply said America's last call and he saw skyscrapers were burned out as, as holes and cities was, was uh, lying in ruins but in bold letters in this night vision that he had shortly before he passed it said the time of the end of all things is at hand the evangelist Steve Hill that was very instrumental in the Brownsville revival shortly before he died he saw a vision of a storm that had potential to destroy millions and the storm was that of false teachings that was plaguing the American church the prophet David Wilkerson in New York City he saw a coming storm of persecution and violence and he simply saw New York City in ruins and many other things and people thought he was crazy but many of the things that he saw are now taking place in this very moment of time Oral Roberts saw a storm 
and he said there was Saul a wasting away of the power and the anointing of God and he simply said the problem in America is that the preachers no longer preach with fire in their belly hear me men of God has been warning us for some time a friend of mine this morning was awakened at 3 30 this is what he saw 3 30 this morning he had a night vision he saw a crowd of 500 plus people they was praying in a large auditorium voices was been lifted high but all of a sudden one voice surpassed every other voice and all of a sudden this is what he heard danger 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 there is darkness coming which will cover the land a storm is coming you must be prepared then the message turned to the promise of our blessed hope and in an hour that you think not the Son of Man comes he awakened when he looked at his watch it was 3 30 this morning what am I saying this morning is that we are in perilous times but there has to be something that changes and the only way that changes is when a church begins to turn and face the wall again and begin to call out in faith believing can I tell you we are on the brink of something changing very drastically in the days ahead there is a reset that is ordained by and orchestrated by the power of the Holy Spirit of God before the end of this year. Can I tell you, yes, perilous times is where we find ourselves, but there is a reset in the prophetic realm that God is getting ready to bring because of the behavior of the remnant of the people of God. Can I tell you this morning, you do not need to be discouraged and down, but you need to be somebody that's willing to get to a place where you're willing to self-examine and say, God, woe is me. Can I tell you this morning that we find ourselves where once again we must become that which we was created to be. You say, what is that? Holy, set apart, full, endued with power by the Holy Spirit of God. Your religion isn't going to save a nation. Your religion is not going to save a world. Uh, your family will die and go to hell unless once again we get back to a place uh, where we walk with power and authority in this hour. We must become witnesses for the kingdom, not tomorrow, but today, because today is the day of salvation. Hear me today. In the book of Jude, verse 17 through 20, you will find it says, But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last times who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves sensually, having not the Spirit. But you, beloved, building up yourselves on the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm about to sound radical to some of you in this room. But you hear me this morning. You cannot go to a place that God is desiring us to go by simply saying a prayer such as this, Lord, I lay me down to sleep. I pray my soul to keep. It's going to take somebody beginning to lay between the porch and the altar and begin to use a prayer language uh, to begin to pray in the power of the Holy Ghost again and be not ashamed of who God is calling you to be. You need to hear the word of the Lord this morning. Uh, from the form of godliness, you have to turn away. From those that are denying the power thereof, you must turn away. Listen, uh, you can sit in every church service there is and die and go to hell. Uh, but when somebody begins to set themselves apart uh, and begin to walk after the things of God, uh, there is an enduing of power that will bring you to a realm uh, where you will walk with him and talk with him uh, and you will be blessed. We are not just being called to turn and face a wall, but we are being called to climb the staircase to an upper room again and tarry there till once again we become a generation that is dued with power from on high. This generation is not concerned about a story of yesterday's revival, uh, but they are desperate for a move of God. Uh, but in order for them to have it, uh, somebody's got to lead them uh, to where Jesus is. The last words that Jesus said, he said, go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise. Does anybody have the promise this morning? 
Well, I, I, I spoke in the Spirit 30 years ago. Well, I'm glad you had the promise 30 years ago. But what about right now? Listen, we find ourselves today where the landmarks of our faith have been destroyed. And then we wonder why there is no power and no authority. We wonder why our nation is in ruin. We wonder why the church house is empty. Listen, my friend. Holiness must once again become a lifestyle that we live. Separation must once again be taught to our children. Sanctification must once again be a process that we continually are willing to go through. Uh, the cross must once again be lifted higher than any preacher. Uh, and the blood must once again be proclaimed. Uh, and the Holy Spirit must be embraced and desired in this season. If not, you're fooling yourself this morning. It's time for you and I to surrender in prayer and to experience a resetting of the church by the Holy Ghost. It is only when we turn in prayer that the places we find ourselves become shaken. You see in Acts chapter 1 and Acts chapter 2, we find that the place where they were shaken as they was waiting for the promise, uh, that there was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. You can quote most of those scriptures, uh, but we find after a lame man outside the gate of beautiful in chapter number 3 uh, had an encounter with God, uh, and after the people of God uh, was been questioned by the religious folks of that day and was released, uh, they went back to their own company in Acts chapter 4 and they began to retell the story uh, and all of a sudden the people got together and they began to pray uh, and it says that where they was uh, the place was shaken uh, and they began to speak with boldness uh, how many's been bold in their faith this week uh, I'm going to tell you not many uh, because we don't come together we don't agree together in prayer there has to be a change I knew you wasn't going to shout me down this morning, but that's all right. Much like in the days of Joshua, we find ourselves at a crossroads this morning. And I've got to sound the alarm today. Joshua 24, verse 14 and 15, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth uh, and put away the gods which your father served uh, on the other side of the flood uh, and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. But it doesn't stop there. He says, If it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. If it seems evil to you today to get to a place where you surrender everything to God, then go serve whatever you want to. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What is your decision? How is your, what is your response? Paul wrote to the believers in Thessalonica. He simply said this in 2 Thessalonians 3 and 6. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, get this, that you withdraw yourself from every brother uh, that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of us. What he was saying is this. You cannot walk with everything and everybody because there is some things that God just does approve of. Oh, but we got to get along, preacher. We got to have everybody in our circle. We, we, we got to, we can't be offensive. We got to, listen, I, I don't want unbelief in my circle. I don't want idol worship in my circle. I don't want religion in my circle. Listen, I'm not in the business of excluding people, uh, but I am in the business of saying this. There is only one church. I don't care if it's Baptist, Pentecostal, Presbyterian. I don't care what denomination you go say you belong to, but I'm telling you there is one church. Uh, it is covered by the blood of Jesus, uh, and I'm here to tell you that church uh, is what I want to be part of. Uh, I need somebody uh, to join with uh, that says that he is our source, our strength. Uh, listen, get rid of all of 
the titles that man has created uh, and come back to say, uh, I'm going to walk with him. Uh, I'm going to live with him. Uh, I'm going to let him lead and guide and direct every aspect of my life. Uh, i got to tell somebody this morning, uh, we're in perilous times, uh, but God is saying, i got to reset uh, for my church in this season. Paul said, withdraw yourself. He also tells Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 6, 3 through 5, if any man teach otherwise and consist not to the wholesome words, uh, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing. I want to insert this here. We have a lot of smooth talkers that know nothing. You can do what you want to with that. But doubting about questions and strifes of words, whereof comes envy, strive, rattlings, evil, summerings, uh, perverse dis, uh, disputings of men and corrupt minds. Notice he says, from such withdraw yourself. He was telling Timothy, Timothy, you can't be connected with stuff that is not in alliance with the Word of God. He said, because it's going to keep you from who God is calling and ordaining you to be. I did not forget where we started this morning, but if you go back to 7, Timothy chapter 3, he said, Know this, Timothy, perilous times will come. These times are coming because men shall be lovers of their own selves. Can I tell you this? Most people go to church on Sunday morning for themselves instead of going for him. This is a problem. We are to come to be edified and equipped, absolutely. But notice, we are come to be edified and equipped to go out there to bring in a harvest, to be fruitful, to turn a light on in the midst of darkness. I'm saying to you today by the unction of the Holy Spirit, there must be a return to the landmarks of our faith. What does that really mean, Pastor? Elders in this room, hear me. Young men and women, please hear me. There has to be a return to the cross. Notice with me the old hymn of the church. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith that I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Why is there no happiness? Why is there no joy? Why does it look like everybody's done drunk deal juice in the church? It's because we left the cross. You hear me this morning. There has to be a coming back to where we are no longer doing anything other than pointing people to the cross. Secondly, if you bring the cross back, you have to bring the blood back. What can wash away my sins? What can make me whole again? That's why we can sing the old chorus, Oh, the blood of Jesus. Anybody remember how it made you feel that night or that day when you knelt down in the midst of your hopelessness and your despair, when all of a sudden the blood of Jesus was shed and applied to your life in such a manner that every weight lifted off and in a moment of time, then when you were so heavy, all of a sudden you felt as light as a feather. Why? It's because not of the theology of men, not because of religion, but because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you, I know that they, that they took the songs out, but listen, uh, I want you to understand with me uh, that the landmark of our faith is the cross, yes, uh, but it is also the blood of Jesus that was shed uh, for all that would call upon his name uh, that they might be saved. There can be no salvation without the blood. Right. 
And yes, there has to be a return to the Holy Ghost. I'll make some of you real nervous. I'll get the, I'll get the spiritual book out this morning. Let me give you a, a verse. Maybe you'll remember this. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the pilgrim way. For the hand of God in all my life I see. At the reason of my bliss, yes, the secret all is this. That what? That the comforter abides with me. See, if you was to sing that this morning, it would be kind of like this. He abides. See, some of you can't sing that. You'd be singing a lie, and you don't want to do that in church. He abides. Hallelujah, he abides in me. Really? Does he? Are you sure? Not because somebody said, repeat after me. Not because somebody said, oh, yeah, you got it. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about that. Does he really abide in you? Is the landmark of the faith present in your life? Because if you're going to stand here and tell me that the cross is a landmark in your life, that the blood is a landmark in your life, and that the Holy Ghost is a landmark in your life, then you better be somebody that's walking with power and authority and dominion. If not, you're lying on God this morning. Listen, my friend, perilous times requires desperate measures. It requires somebody desiring to be infilled with the power of the Holy Spirit in such a manner that they can walk before the men and the women of authority of the day in which they live and they say, we are not careful to answer thee, O King, but we know that our God is able to deliver us. But if he chooses not to, it is fine. You say, man, I wish things would get different. Uh, I, I wish things would change. Uh, listen, uh, there is a prophetic reset uh, for the end of this year uh, if somebody uh, will bring the landmarks back and say, I refuse to deny the things of God. I stand and declare to you today that we are on the brink of a shift. I know you may be weighty this morning. You may be heavy. There may be some difficult things in your life. I'm not making light of those things this morning, but I'm going to tell you uh, that the God that I serve is bigger than any mountain. Uh, he is stronger than anything that the enemy has. Uh, and this morning, uh, when I trust in him, uh, he is faithful to deliver me uh, from the snare of the fowler. I know some may say, preacher, I just don't know. I refuse to allow the unbelief of some to keep me from being one to experience the supernatural of God. And I have scripture for it this morning. Romans chapter 3, verse 3 and 4. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. I'm going to get myself in trouble this morning. But let God be true and every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Can I tell you this morning, I want to give somebody a word of encouragement right now. We are about to overcome. Because in the midst of all of the junk that's going on and in the midst of this crazy chaotic year called 2020, it has pushed the remnant of God's people to a place of prayer. And when they went to a place of prayer, they began to read that what they began to do in the spirit realm. God began to show me this. Uh, in the time of their prayer and their intercession by and through the Holy Spirit, they began to go back uh, and they began to pick up removed landmarks and put them back in proper places. Uh, and the church is getting restructured 
entered in the spirit realm uh, and we're getting ready to experience uh, the power and the blessing and the favor of God in such a manner uh, because the landmarks have been restored. Uh, the cross is coming back to the forefront. Uh, the blood of Jesus has been applied uh, and yes, there's a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit uh, that's about to hit a generation. Uh, so don't you tell me uh, we need to take the Holy Ghost and put him in a basement uh, or a back corner. Uh, but I come to tell you this morning, uh, somebody's going to have to be bold enough uh, to begin to pray in the Spirit again uh, and begin to intercede uh, because God is getting ready to do something in this moment of time. I do not apologize this morning for standing and speaking truth. Hear me. There has to be a generation fathered. There has to be a generation corrected. There has to be a generation that is loved in such a manner that they began to understand uh, that God desires for them to be fruitful and to touch the world. And there has to be a generation that begins to experience the healing balm of Gilead again. But this morning, it all begins by us becoming the taught church by the Holy Spirit instead of being the untaught church of skillful intellect and seducing spirits of men and doctrines of devils. Perilous times are here, yes. But I'm so thankful that we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. So where does that put us this morning? Notice it puts us in a place where we must understand that we've got to get back to the truth of God's word in such a manner that we unashamedly stand for the cross, the blood, and the empowering of the Holy Spirit so that a generation can not just hear a story, but so that they can experience Him in His fullness. This morning, it all begins when somebody is willing to turn and face the wall. The question is, will you? The question is, will I? Please hear me this morning. This is not a time to quit. It's not a time to back up. It's not a time to be weary and well-doing. But this is a time, as we read in the book of Jude, that you, beloved, building up yourselves, taking responsibility for yourself on your most holy faith, begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. In the last several weeks, I cannot testify to anyone else's experience, but I can only testify for what God is doing in my life. And I will be very honest, I've traveled, been with a lot of folks, different different veins of ministry and all types of places and some of those guys make me really nervous I've told you that before but one of the things that really make me nervous is they get up in a setting like this and all of a sudden they just say all right it's time to pray and now begin to pray in the spirit I was like Lord y'all must be a whole lot more spiritual than me sometimes I have to labor to get there it seemed like but can I tell you in this season God is beginning to do a work in the lives of men and women in such a manner. And he's wanting us to understand that he's not far off. But in this very moment, he's very, very near. You hear me. There is a moving in the angelic host of heaven. There's a realigning of many things taking place. And I don't have time to get into all of it this morning. But I want you to hear me. The people of God. You say, I'm saved. I'm not questioning your salvation. Notice with me. There has been 
this ideal that you had to become super spiritual before you could ever receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I don't know where that started, but I'm going to tell you something that's not true. I understand we're a process of sanctification. I understand we've got to walk to a place where we're set apart. I get all of that. But the same God that gives you the gift of salvation is the same God that wants to give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. You don't earn it. You don't get good enough to receive it. It's just by having faith to believe that it's something God has for you. You hear me this morning. You don't have to be a Christian for 50 years before you can get endued with power. Notice what Peter said, and I'm going to close with this this morning. On the day of Pentecost, they began to experience a suddenly. All of a sudden, there began to be an eruption. People that was in the city, they began to hear unlearned men and women began to speak in a language that was their former language, their native language. I said, how in the world can these people speak in this manner? They've not been taught. They're, they're not who we are. Some began to make mockery and make fun. But Peter, empowered by the Holy Spirit, stood up. And he said, seeing as but the third hour of the day, these men are not drunk, as you suppose, but this is that which the prophet Joel spoke about. In the last days, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. We can quote all that scripture. But when you get on down to that latter part of that chapter, and he gives them great words, and he, gives, he said, you all crucified Jesus Christ. And he said, he just, he's laying it on them. He, he, was, he was definitely preaching a Pentecostal message that day. I believe he might have even had the finger going at him. I don't know. He was, he was letting them have it. But when you get down to verse 37 of chapter 2, this is what they, he says, now when they heard this, they was pricked in their heart and said to, unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Here's why the enemy does not want you to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. People don't talk about it much, but this is why. Because when the Holy Spirit is on display, it draws people to have an appetite for the things of God. That's why the enemy says, oh, you don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. Then Peter said unto them, notice, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sin, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. He was simply saying to them then, in that moment, if you will accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you will repent from your sin, he not only will save you, but he will also endue you with power by the Holy Ghost so that you can experience what we are experiencing right now. Can I tell you, young people in this room, you hear me. You need to experience the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about just saying some words that you don't understand. I'm not talking about that. There is evidence, yes, of the Holy Spirit coming up on us. And that is one of the signs, yes, uh, when men and women begin to speak in an unknown tongue. But I'm here to tell you the reason that we need a generation to be endued with power from on high right now with the power of the Holy Ghost is so that they can begin to make intercession in prayer by the Holy Ghost, such as Jude said. He said, because, listen, you've got to build yourself on your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost can I just be real and not uh, this is not to be derogatory at all but here's how the American church is praying today Lord we love you Lord we thank you now Lord do this do this do this then we forget what to say Lord we love you we thank you. Now, Lord, do this, do this. He is not hard of hearing. He does not have Alzheimer's. He does not have dementia. He's not hiding in a basement. He knows what he's doing. He's sitting on the throne. Now, I understand some of you could talk on the phone for three hours, but when it comes to prayer, you have a hard time saying ten words. I get that. That's why 
you need to be endued with the power of the Holy Ghost so that when you come down and get into the presence of God and you kneel down and you begin to say what you need to say, but all of a sudden the spirit man begins to take over and you begin to make intercessions. Uh, you begin to groan in the spirit. You be Listen, I, I know what it is to be in my house and pray to have somebody over because I knew what they was going to hear. They was going to hear... <coughs> Excuse me, coming up out of the register vents. Oh, God. I was like, what in the world's going on? That was my daddy groaning before the Lord. You hear me? I'm not making fun. But I'm telling you, there's some power uh, when the Spirit uh, begins to pray through a man of God and a woman of God. Uh, and that's why you can begin to do some things uh, that the enemy is scared of if somebody would begin to pray in the Spirit again. I'm trying to quit, but I'm going to tell you something. Uh, we got about five weeks left of 2020, but in these next five weeks or four and a half weeks, whatever it is, if somebody will begin to build up themselves uh, in their most holy faith uh, and pray in the Holy Ghost, uh, there is going to be a reversal. I've said it all year, and I'm going to say it one more time. Before the end of this year, there's some prodigals that's going to come home. Uh, there's some wayward children uh, that's about to be delivered. Uh, there's about to be a manifestation uh, of the power and the glory of God. Listen, my friend. Earl Roberts, he said, don't you waste the power of God. David Wilkerson said, there's a storm coming. Uh, Steve Hill said, there's some false teaching that's bringing millions to death. Uh, you got to preach truth. Uh, Kenneth Hagin said, the scroll says, the time of the end of all things is near. Listen, my friend, we have to wake up now. But will you and will I change our schedule? Rearrange our lives to experience a move of God. A friend of mine, young man, getting ready to take his little daughter and his wife to Honduras to the mission field. Last night, a little video pops up. It said, we're going to interview our little girl tonight. And here's what the little girl had to say. The Lord told me. Her life's getting ready to be turned upside down. She's getting ready to leave everything she's ever known. Not to go to the comforts of this world, but to go so mommy and daddy can reach a part of the world with the gospel of Jesus. And all of a sudden, the Lord comes and visits this little girl and tells her, it's going to be all right, the Lord says. You hear me this morning. The Holy Ghost is moving in the earth today, searching for a vessel that he can set down upon and empower and equip to be a witness in this world moment are you that willing vessel in the midst of perilous times will you be instrumental in bringing about the reset that God has ordained for this very moment in history the question this morning is not something that can be ignored but it's something that must be answered choose you this day choose you this day at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away do you want a generation to sing that song not because it's words on a page, but because it's written in their heart. Do you want this generation to be able to sing with their hands lifted and tears coming down their face? Oh, the blood of Jesus. 
do you want them to be able to sing from experience? He abides. He abides. We come to the piano this morning. It all begins. When we go back to 2 Timothy chapter 3 and we hear the words that Paul wrote from a Roman prison cell. He wrote in such a manner of a father to Timothy. He said, Timothy, I love you, man, but my days are numbered. Death is just in front of me. But I want you to continue. I don't want you to waver, but I want you to know perilous times are coming because of the heart of men. But when you see all of those things, Timothy, don't let it move you. Don't let it shake you. But Timothy, oh Timothy, turn. What he was simply saying is, Timothy, when you see all the stuff, when you see all of the disturbing things, just hold on to what you know is true. Just hold on to what you know. I don't know anything else. All I know is this, that if you'll grab a hold of the horns of the altars, it's worked for generations. All I know is that when a man or a woman will sell out to God, he can take them from nothing and give them everything. He could take a broken, messed up life and make it the most beautiful thing. He can take the mere hands of men and they can anoint with oil and they can pray a prayer of faith and cancer flees, heart disease is destroyed. Limbs can grow, not because of man, but because of the Holy Spirit inside of man. When a group of people will come together and pray and begin to call out to God in faith believing, when you get report after report that it doesn't look good, that you can end up with a beautiful baby Lucy. It's getting healthier and bigger every day. You hear me? Do we desire more than this? We can we can continue, come and sing our songs, hear our message, and go about our lives continue to not see the hand of God or we can choose to become men and women of faith once again and begin to say the cross will not be removed from my life the blood of Jesus will not be removed from my life and the Holy Ghost will be a staple in my life and we can begin to see the power and the anointing of God and we can see the hand of God begin to turn and move Right now, right now, on the brink of a shift, I can stand here all day and tell you about it, but God has put in my spirit that that shift is hanging and hinging on the cry of the church. So this morning, we stand all over this house I'm going to take us to a place of prayer here's here's what I want to do this morning I'm going to put some of you on the spot this morning is that all right? Elijah, I want you to come and join me right here, if you would, please. Madison, would you come and stand right beside him? 
Brother Larry, would you come and you just turn and face the crowd if you would. Brother Larry, would you come? Brother Jade, I want you to come. Sister Mary Lou, would you come? Sister May, would you come? Stand beside her. I've got the orange one, Keaton. Here's what I'm going to ask us to do. I want you just to begin right here. I want us to go to prayer together. This is not a performance. But this is a time to let your spirit just begin to pray. And I want you right where you're standing this morning, I want you right now to just enter into prayer with us. You pray how the Spirit leads you. I'd like for you to pray for your generation, Madison. I'd like for you to pray for your generation. Pray for the church, right? Brother Larry, I want you to just pray for our nation this morning. Whatever how the Spirit leads you. Brother Jade, I want you to pray the unction of the Holy Spirit this morning. Mothers of the faith this morning, I want you to pray just for a sweetness of the Holy Spirit just to come right now. You don't have to listen to them pray. I want you to join your prayer with them this morning. I want the heavens to hear your voice right now. Don't be afraid to pray aloud. But right now, lift your voice as we just begin to make intercession together for the church and for our nation for our families. Go ahead, Sister Maddie. Oh, let their hearts be turned again, God. Oh, Christ, the Master, to come see me again. Lord, let us find a place at your feet and call us to a place of holiness. Lord, to a place of separation, God. And oh, let the path be able to be walked by many, God. Lord, let many come. Let their eyes be opened and blinders be pushed back, God. Let us be the catalyst for a generation of change, God. Spark a fire within us. Oh, to this town. God, and for my generation, I cry out on behalf of those my age, God, that we will see you again, God, and that in your return there will be a strong power, God, that a sense of your presence will walk with us, God, and that will be in me and through me, God, that there will be many come to you, God, and I cry out that we will come to you again, and that a change will come, that their hearts will be transformed and changed in a manner that no man can take credit for. Even now, God, oh, Master, hear my cry, God, that we will walk in power again, that your authority will sweep over this generation, God. Let our voice be a voice of change and a voice of reverence, God, for I reverence your holy name. I lift you up on high, and so will my generation. We will return to you. Your presence will walk within us and through us, God, and even now a change will come. He shut it out. God, thank you. Oh, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, Lord, I pray to see the light of you, God, Lord. And that those souls, those lost souls, God, they just see the way, Lord. And that drugs isn't the way, God. And that vaping's not the way, girl, Lord. And that this, this things aren't, it's not the way, Lord, God. And that you just show them the light, God. And they would get saved, God. And they would see the light through us, Lord, God. And that you just raise up a people, God, in this generation, Lord, in this church, God, to be the light to the world, God, because the world is lost, God. But with you, God, all things are possible, God. That you flip a generation upside down, God. That you flip my school upside down, God. And that they would 
you see your power and your presence, Lord, and that you're so good, God, and that nothing is greater than you, Jesus, and that you're salvation in this world, Lord, and that you are the light, God, and that you are the way, Lord, God, that you should be with us, God, and pour out your spirit upon us, God, and be with us every single day, God, that we just walk with you, God, that we walk with the word, God, and we just walk with the spirit, God, and to not be afraid to be bold, Lord, with you, God, and that we can just walk with you, Jesus, be bold for people, God, oh, we can say that you are the way, God, not be afraid, God, and not that a devil in hell can stop us, because you are with us, Lord. God, I pray that your spirit be with us, God, and that you just keep moving and pouring out your spirit, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, I lift this nation up to you right now, Father. Yes. Guide this nation through your great Holy Spirit, Father. Yes. Give us the strength that we need to endure, Lord. Lord, let the church arise. Let it arise, Father, with your great love and your mercy that you give us and your grace, Lord. Be with us, Father. Oh, Lord, I thank you, Jesus, for what you're even doing even now, Father, in the midst, Lord. Touch us, Lord. Move upon us, Lord. We repent, Father, right now for this nation, Lord, through the Holy Spirit, God. Guide us, Lord. Hear this cry, Father. Hear the cry of the people, Father. Let us come to you again, Lord. Guide us. Lead us through the Holy Ghost, Father. In the Jesus' name I pray, Father. Come into our midst again. In Jesus' name. God, we pray right now for restoration to come to the people of God. Lord, you shared something with me in a passage of Scripture in John chapter 11. Lord God, where you showed me that, that the church, there's many people, many adults in this house, not just young people, but many adults in this house that are as Mary and Martha. Lord God, that when you didn't come or you didn't show up the way that they thought that you should, that they went ahead and they buried the call of God on their life. Lord, there's many adults in this house, I say again, that have buried the call of God on their life. And now Jesus is here and he's saying, where have you laid it? Where have you placed that call of God? Where have you put it? For I am the resurrection. I am the life. I want to restore the power that I've placed on your life. I want to restore the call that I've placed on your life. There are intercessors in this house. There are preachers in this house. There are Sunday school teachers in this house. There are missionaries in this house. There are evangelists in this house. God, I ask that the tomb door fly open wide. And I ask that you begin to restore the passion for the things of God in their life again. I ask for the call to come forth. uh, Lord, that they'll begin to intercede uh, for their children and their lost loved ones. That they'll begin to preach uh, to the lost that surround them. Lord, that they will take off the limits. Uh, It doesn't matter what what we think uh, or what we may feel, but God, we're pushing past what we feel. We're pushing into what we know. And that you are Alpha. That you are Omega. That you are the beginning and the end. The first and the last. And God, it's a new season. It's a new day. Restoration has come. Restoration has come. You are whole in the name of Jesus. Father God, we come to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and I take authority over every unruly spirit that's in this house that would try to acknowledge itself in the name of Jesus. Father God, I take authority over every high thought that tries to acknowledge itself against the knowledge of God. Father God, we lose the sweetness of the Holy Spirit. We lose freedom in this house in the name of Jesus. That, Father God, that your people will begin to walk and be unashamed of who they are. That, Father God, that you have released them and given them the power God in their life in the name of Jesus. And Father God, your word says, and having done all to stand, we're going to stand there for God. We're not going to run. We're not going to hide. But God, we're going to fight in the name of Jesus. And we're going to fight in the Holy Ghost. That Lord, that every soul that's in this house will receive your beautiful spirit. That, Father God, they'll receive the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. That, Father God, we are in agreement and they will receive it, God, and be unashamed of what it sounds like. That there will be no man-fearing spirit in this house 
in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank yes. you for it. And we glorify yes. you, God, for yes. the change that's come this day. And we will not back up. We will go forward and we will fight in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There's many in this house this morning that feels like they don't have a purpose. But God says this morning, I've got a purpose for you. If you're willing to step out and move and walk and talk, I've got a purpose for you. I'm on this side of the mountain and I'm going to tell you right now, I've got a purpose. You've got a purpose. You come and you go and you come and you go and you say, God, what am I, you know, why am I here? What am I doing? He says this morning, rise up, walk. When I tell you to go somewhere, go. When I tell you to speak, speak. You don't have to have a platform to be used of God. You can go into Kroger and you can be going down the aisle and somebody comes to you and there's yes. that quickening of the spirit. Be brave enough to say, in the name of Jesus. God said this, God said that. Rise up and walk. There's streets, there's streets out here in Connersville and in every city that you people live in that's that's full of children, full of young people dying from drugs, dying from from all kinds of sicknesses and disease because nobody will love them enough to go and say, Here I am, Lord, use me. And I'm I am I am an old lady. And I say, Lord, when I get up before morning, God, I've got a purpose. Here I am, use me. You can't say you don't have a purpose. You were sent here for a purpose. Your life was ordained in the heavens before you come here. And maybe you walk this way and you messed yourself up and you messed your family up. But he says this morning, if you'll come back and if you'll say, God, I've got a purpose and I want to walk in it. I might be 50 years old, 60 years old, 90 years old. But tell him, I've got a purpose. And you might just be 20 years old and you've went here. And he said, go there. He said, I've still got a purpose. Yes. His mercy and his grace is new every morning, every morning, every morning. Let him use you. Let him use you. I'm going to ask you to lift your hands all over this building right now. Oh, God. Will we come before you this morning? Lord, we lift our hands. Oh, we lift our hands to you and only you. Father, right now as we come into agreement, one mind and one accord in this sanctuary today, I'm asking right now by the power of the Holy Spirit for there to be a suddenly to come into this room. Lord, for the one that may be weary, Lord, I pray for strength. For the one that may be weak and unsure right now, Lord, I pray that there would be clarity of thought that would come. Lord, I pray for just an undoing of the power of the Holy Spirit to rest upon this congregation of men and women. I release the Oma to be the man and the woman of God that you have ordained them to be. Uh, Lord, we call forth now uh, to the four winds, uh, and we ask that the wind would begin to blow in this house. Uh, Lord, I pray for a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit, uh, much like they encountered in Acts chapter 4. Uh, let this place be shaken uh, while we call out to you and let men and women be renewed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Those that have never been filled, Father, let them be filled even now with the power of your Spirit. I release this moment, in this time, a refreshing of Holy Ghost power in this room. 
Ola bashata ki la basoto ola bashata o kalabasi i kalabashoto la bashata i la bashako la bashata i kalabashoko la bashata o kalabasha i kalabashoto kalabasha i la bashoko la basa o la bashata i kalabashota i la bashoko la basata i kalabashoto la bashata i la bashoko Hi everybody, it's Pastor Jade Abrams here. I want to thank you for joining us today. And I also want you to connect with us. You can find us on all the social media platforms listed below. And we would love to catch up with you, hear what God has spoke to you, and continue to follow us. And we love you and God bless you.